So you may or may not have an old PC or pre-built from Dell or HP or Compaq sitting at home that you or a family member got off the shelf or that you picked up at a garage sale thinking it was a sweet deal. Maybe it was. And it's a little loud or runs a little hot. Maybe you want to switch out the fans, but you come to notice that you can't because the pins are different. So how can you bypass this? Well, I've got a solution for you that I'm going to show you here today. And if I look a little different in the video, it's because the original intro got corrupted. So let's walk you through the process and get this PC upgraded. Let's get into this beautiful Dell XPS 720. All right, so let's figure out where some fan placement is. We have a fan over here in this little cage. We also have another fan in the heat sink over here. There's also this little tiny 80 millimeter fan in between the hard drive cages. And there's also mounting for a fan over here on the rear panel. So there's no mounting for the front panel, but there is mounting in here and here and here. So that's the thing, when you're trying to find some sort of mounting for your OEM computer, it's gonna be a little tricky at first, or it might not be, but it's not gonna be what you see from a standard computer. It's gonna be a little bit different. So anyone that's watching this at home, just be sure to look around and see what's going to fit the best. Now they do use, you know, regular sizes for these fans, like 120 millimeter, 120 millimeter, 80 millimeter, and another 120 millimeter over here. So they're not gonna use some weird, like, I don't know, 156 millimeter fan just to throw you off so you have to buy that specific fan. There's a way to get past this, and I'm gonna show you how. So the first item that we gotta use is a fan hub. Now you don't always have to use a fan hub. Maybe the fans that you're working with use Molex connection for power, and you can do it that way. But then again, you would need a lot of different Molex connectors or you could just, you know, daisy chain them together as well. That's fine too. But maybe you don't want to deal with all of that. This is a fan hub and deals with the three to four pin connectors. And the fans that I'm dealing with here are only three pin connectors. They don't have a Molex attachment to them. So I needed to get this fan hub, which connects via a SATA connection. So this will work out just fine. And I think this was only, I, I forget how much that was, but it wasn't too much. So we're gonna have three 120 millimeter fans here. We're gonna have one here, one here, and one here. So the ones that I'm using are these Allzai case fans. They have the silicone skin around them and they work, uh, actually I don't know how they work. I just picked them up because they were cheap. Uh, I think they were like nine or 10 bucks on Amazon. So yeah, we're just gonna use these and for the 80 millimeter fan, we're gonna use this one from Arctic. It's a little 80 millimeter fan that we're gonna use. Um, there was also a Noctua one, but that one was a little too expensive for me. So we're gonna to have to get into here and get the fans out and also get mounting. So first we're gonna take out this fan. We're gonna disconnect it from the motherboard. And just to put into perspective what kind of fans we're dealing with here, they have these weird five pin design. Um, you're probably not gonna be able to see that on the camera. It has this weird five pin design that really just uh, just wants to throw you in for a loop if you're gonna try to change the fan. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Out of here, screw. Got that one, there we go. All right, so there's our first fan here. So you can see that we've got something that is a little different from the norm or what you would see for fan mounting in a modern PC case today so uh yeah you don't see these around okay next we're gonna get this heat sink off okay got the cpu fan cooler out there is a little 80 millimeter fan over here that we're gonna try to get out oh man i think i'm gonna have to remove some ram sticks <laughs> got it yeah look at this thing it's, you can hear the vibration in that fan just spinning around okay got our fans out okay we're gonna go ahead and just install this fan hub which gives us eight ports to work with so that's awesome and we can see here it connects via SATA connection it also comes with adhesive this 3m adhesive that you can put on the back and stick anywhere you want I might put it up here or whatnot, but I'm just gonna leave it freely hanging for right now. 
before I get everything installed. Okay, so this is the first fan we're gonna work with and kind of break down. We can see it's in this cage. So as we can see here, there's like these tabs over here. And if we press down on these, see if I can punch this out, there we go. And take off the bracket. And here is the fan with the metal grill. They also got rubber standoffs, that's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so let's get these out of here. Just gonna pull these out. Mm. Surprised it just didn't break or shatter on me. So I'm just gonna pull these out. Yep, they all survived, so that's good. So I'm gonna retire this bad boy, put that off to the side. This one is from All's Eye. And they give you screws as well as rubber standoffs. Yeah, so this is this is the back of the cage and this is the front. So this is where the intake will be. So we know by the brace right here, that's the back of the fan. So we want that pointing towards the back. Okay, so we're gonna match the cutout right there with the hole, route this through. And voila, now let's screw this into place. Now we got a new fan in there. Next up, we've got this lovely fan. There's a cage around it, which I'm just gonna take off. I don't like this cage. Remove this. Oh, okay. That just kinda broke off, but that's cool. So this heat sink stands completely by itself. Just kinda rattles around in here. We'll be, we'll be okay. There's a little cutout right there. So I'm gonna keep that cage off because, yeah, I don't really know why the cage is there. I'm sure someone knows why, but I particularly don't at this point in time. So yep, that's our, that's our heat sink, so that's cool. All right, heat sink is done. Okay, so now we've got the little 80 millimeter fan. I'm just gonna pull this out. One of those uh, rubber mounts just broke on me. Some of this is still dusty, even after all that cleaning I did. I mean, I'm not surprised that thing was ridiculously dusty. So this is this is a frame that it sits in that we just push up in between the hard drive cage. Oh, I just broke it. No wait, it just popped through. I don't like that. That one just popped through the frame too. Some of these frames can be a little tricky because they won't actually support a the head on a uh, on one of these fan screws. So I would recommend buying an extra pack of rubber mounts. And luckily, the ones from Allzai came with them. But uh, if you can, I would recommend doing that just in case you come with any of these because you'll be able to have a head thick enough to fit this kind of mount. Mm. That one's installed. Let's see if I can reach these. I really hate these cages. If you want to work with this kind of mounting. Oh, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. I need doctor's tools to literally get the head of this. Oh, I just had it. Come on. That's installed. Not my favorite way, but it's installed. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so here's the finished product. We replaced the heat sink, the 80 millimeter hard drive fan, and also the front panel fan. 
So these are the corresponding fans that went with them and we can see the difference here. Let's get these installed and see how it sounds. So we can also see there's mounting for another fan over here for an exhaust. So we're gonna do that right now while everything's out to make the ease of installation as easy as possible. Let's get that 80 millimeter up here first. This is just gonna pop back into here. There we go. This one got a hook on the hinges and then place down like that. And then we can start screwing into place. Okay, that's installed. We got the fan connector right there. Then the last one to install is this one right here. And these wires are a little short, but let's see where we can meet in the middle with all these. So, yeah, that's gonna have to just chill there, I guess, because that's not really gonna go much further, is it? All right, let's see how this sounds. I'm kind of excited. Now the PSU fan is still really loud. As you can hear, it's whining when we turn on the computer. But the rest of the fans are fairly silent because they're running at full speed right now. Um, the only problem is, yeah, that fan from the PSU is pretty loud and I can't get the PSU out of the case without cutting up the case. I tried getting the case out by removing the top and I thought it was removable, but it's just glued on, so I just kind of ripped it off. Um, but that can always be re-glued, that's not an issue. But there's a frame here that just completely blocks the PSU from even being brought out of the case, so I can't really get to it and disassemble it and put in a different fan in there. So that is the only problem. Other than that, um, it's running fairly silent. So you, if you have an OEM computer that has uh, a little bit more room to work with and you can remove the power supply and possibly replace the fan that's in there, then I would advise doing that as well because that could be a uh, low quality fan depending on the type of power supply. Usually they don't put in aftermarket power supplies in these uh, pre-built computers. So yeah, that's an example of dissecting and diagnosing the fan placement and the kind of OEM parts that you're working with and putting in aftermarket parts. Like I said before, your path of options for upgrading is pretty limited when it comes to these kinds of computers from Dell and HP. So, you know, you have to take that with a grain of salt and look at what you can upgrade. In this case, we can make the PC quieter. So, unfortunately, the PSU was still pretty loud. It was whining and it also whines when it's just running normally. So even when the fans are running at full speed, they're still quiet, but it's still overtaken by the, the sound of the PSU and the PSU wasn't removable. So there are certain obstacles that are still, you know, present that I wasn't able to get to within the span of this video. I'm sure if I cut the case apart or found some sort of lucrative way to get the PSU out of the case, and I've spent hours trying to, um, then you can replace the fan and that would make it quieter. But I wasn't able to do that. So if you can do that, I would recommend doing that if the PSU is, or the power supply is loud. And if you can't, then you just upgrade what kind of fans that you can. All the links to all the parts that were used in the video will be listed below and some of my other recommendations for some other fans from like Asia Horse and some other manufacturers as well that make uh, good fans. So I could have went with RGB nice fans, but I decided to go with something subtle and nice because uh, there's no clear window side panel anyways. You wouldn't be able to see that from the front panel looking through the mesh, so that wouldn't happen. So yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Hopefully the audio quality isn't too terrible for uh, the parts that was using the lapel mic. I don't know what it sounds like yet because I haven't listened to it. 
hopefully that wasn't too terrible. If you want to see more videos like this, working with some OEM computers and just upgrading them and seeing what we can do with them and working with them and experimenting, then let me know because I, I like doing this stuff. It's fun to kind of mess around with it, even though it can be really difficult sometimes. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. And here goes the cat. Okay, he's done.